Hey, welcome back to the shop for another episode of Shop Talk. So, your questions keep coming in, and you guys seem to continue to enjoy these videos, so we're going to keep them rolling, all right? I've had a few more questions come in that I figured I would go ahead and answer in another episode here. So, I've had a lot of people ask me about the ways on the Monarch. There's a couple of spots in there that look like it's been damaged. So, I'm going to go down there, I'm going to address what people are asking about. There's also some damage to the top of the uh, cover on the Victor lathe that I've had a lot of people ask me about too. And I've replied to these questions in comments, but it's just so much easier to, to just throw it on video so that so many more of you can get the answer that you're wondering. So I'm gonna take you down there and we're gonna talk about that. The uh, last episode when I was talking about the electrical in here, the three phase power, uh, I had a couple of guys actually ask me about my air compressor and they don't know about the air compressor and they'd like to see that so we'll walk outside and I'll I'll give you a peek at the air compressor and I'll I'll show how I've got my lines running here anyway all right and then one thing that, that I'm going to go ahead and mention is uh, last week I I asked you about a belt sander I had that sales flyer from MSC that showed that Rockwell belt sander and I I'm glad that I did that because I got a really good response out of that. Most of you said, don't waste your money on that stuff. A lot of you left me a comment in even emails that you have a machine like that or very similar to it and they're not worth, they're not worth it. I mean, they're just not very well, very well built, should I say. So most of the people that responded to it said they're not happy with it and don't waste your money. Look for something used. Look for a good quality, especially an older piece, and uh, don't don't waste your money on that import stuff. So that's kind of the line that I was taking anyway. But yeah, like uh, Brian had brought up a good point about he's like, man, don't get sucked into those prices. <laughs> uh, some of the tooling and stuff we get is a little bit different story, but for a machine. You know, you really got to be picky about what you're going to spend your money on. So I bailed on that. And so instantly and naturally, some of my viewers started searching and scouring Craigslist all over the country for these belt sanders. And lo and behold, Jack Inman, the man who gave me the four jaw chuck for the Monarch down there, contacted me. And there is a almost new Wilton right there locally to him in Nashville. So... He, uh, he sent me an email about it, showed it to me, sent me the link. I texted the owner of it and asked him about it. And uh, Jack went ahead and, and went and looked at the machine and struck a deal with him. And he's going to handle crating and he's going to send it down here to me. And me and, me and Jack are, you know, working together on the, the cost and that kind of stuff. But I believe, if I remember right, he said it's like eight months old and they bought it brand new. It's uh, about $2,000 new, and we got it for a lot less than that, a really good deal. So it wasn't used very, very much. It still looks like a new machine. It is the, it's, it's not the, the combo machine where it's got the belt and the disc. It's just a straight uh, belt sander. I believe it's a six by 48 belt sander, ver vertical belt sander. So I'm getting excited about finally getting me a nice belt sander. That's exactly the style that I wanted in here in the shop. And what my plan is, is that corner over there that I talked about before, I wanna put the sander there and the pedestal grinders. Hopefully the drill grinder can, can go over there too eventually and take that fan down off the wall and start hanging hand grinders up on the wall and some C-clamps and stuff like that and work on that corner to get it more organized and have that more of the grinding area over there. So whenever that machine gets here, I'll be sure to uh, share it with you and we'll plug it in and make sure it works. So I'm gonna grab the handheld and we'll go down here and we'll talk about the lathes. I just wanted to point out the new mat again and let you know that, I'm, that I like it. It's working really good and I can't wait to get another one over here by the Victor. All right, so the question at hand was these marks right here in the ways. So I'll just point out, first of all, no, I did not do those, and that's not crash damage on those waves. But what that is, 
and and this is only guessing and assuming is those were actually ground you know somebody's taking a grinder and ground those and the reason why this this way here is closer to the center line of the of the spindle and the chuck here than this side so when they when these chuck jaws are extended out you're going to clear here but you're going to come over here and hit so what this is is actually clearance for these chuck jaws to allow a little bit more holding capacity so i would imagine there's been times in the past in the life of this machine where somebody had something chucked up in this in this lathe and they needed just a little bit more clearance for these jaws to swing out and the width of it is probably you know the jaw was turned around to where they're chucking like on the od or you know this part of the jaw was on the outside so the full width of it's trying to pass through and they needed a little bit more clearance so that's what is going on here and the big monarch that we used to have that i showed in s and s 100 had the same thing on that machine too because the ways were built identical it's just a bigger machine and they had gone in and ground this out with grinders so that that chuck would uh, clear the ways there now this one right here what it's looking like to me is there was a part that they had chucked up and was trying to swing for an example say like a spindle off of a tractor you know you got there's spindles out there that sort of like they're straight and then they have another kickoff you know to one side i've had to do some of those before and it looks to me like something like that was probably set up in this lathe and they just barely just would not clear this way right here so somebody took the grinder over here and ground it and knocked it off just enough where that part would clear and it's not much it's just a little bit and sometimes that's really all you need you know I can understand on a I, I couldn't bring myself to grind this <laughs> but I can see where you you spend the time and get something set up in this lathe and you can't turn it you know it just won't swing so you do what you got to do to get the job done so that that's uh, that's what's going on right there this was ground out for clearance for the jaws this one was probably ground to clear a part that they had set up in the in the lathe here all right so moving over here to the victor the uh, the other question that's that's been asked a lot is that right there that damage people say it looked like somebody's been over here with a hammer hitting on that well what that is that was done by my dad <laughs> what he used to do is whenever the whenever the four jaw chuck you know he used the four jaw chuck a lot just like me whenever he would take the chuck off he would he would take it off right here and he would kind of roll it up onto the cross slide and then lay it over and I guess whenever he would lay it over he would just kind of let it drop there at the end and these little indentions all those were caused by these studs right here on the back of the four jaw chuck and it, and it wasn't this chuck obviously this is the new one but the uh, the other old four jaw chuck that's got all six studs so if you look at it you can see all the little indentions where the studs had hit it over the years and this is a long time this he got this laid back in the 80s you know he used it for years so that that's a lot of that's a lot of slamming right there so it could easily be fixed i just never have taking it off and, and gone over and beat it out but that is something that I need to do is uh, fix that I know it looks kind of bad but that's uh, that's what's going on right there that was caused from the four jaw chuck being laid over this is where dad always liked to keep it and the reason why he did that is because it's a heavy chuck and he didn't like picking that thing up so he liked it right here that way he could, he could just stand it up and then roll it over here and mount it to the spindle all right, so I hope that answered your question there. All right, you guys asked about my air compressor, so here she is. Ingersoll ran T30. So the story behind this, I think it was in uh, probably 1999, 98 or 99. It was late 90s. Dad decided he wanted a blast cabinet because we were borrowing somebody else's blast cabinet all the time doing work in it. So he decided to make the investment in that blast cabinet that's inside the shop. He bought that and this air compressor at the same time. 
because you you got to have a compressor big enough to run a blast cabinet. I mean, it depends on what size it is, but this is the one that we needed. So it's 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 a good compressor. It still uh still runs good. Sound like somebody was going by honking at me. It's got the uh, the automatic drip drain on there, you know, but it's also got the petcock there that I can loosen up and uh, drain it out. Uh, three phase, I believe that's a 15 horse motor on it, a Baldor 15 horse motor. I believe it puts out something like uh, 55 CFM. I believe it's a 120 gallon tank. And twin cylinder compressor. It's got the uh, air cooler on the on the other side there, mounted to it also. So as far as the plumbing, the what I ended up using whenever I was hooking this stuff up, I know it's not the best choice, but what I used was Schedule 80, uh, the gray PVC pipe. So I've got that pipe going in, feeding inside the shop, and what I plan to do is uh, run another line out here. I'm going to redo this. And I'm going to tie another line into it, and it'll run down the uh, it'll run down the wall, and I'll have more drops out here where I can hook up more air lines out here on the outside. So that's uh, we'll walk inside, and I'll show you how I got it laid out in there. So there's the pipe coming in to the shop. That's the main that's the main pipe coming in. I do have a uh, disconnect right there, a valve that I can shut it off. And then it goes up, and I've got it feeding that way. And we also we come around this way right here with it, and it comes down, and I got it where it hooks into my uh, uh, wrong side there. Got it where it's hooked into my blast cabinet. Got that rubber hose hooked in. So that's the only one so far that comes around on this side of the shop. Now, what I plan to do up there, I haven't ever completed this airline system. I'm going to run another line over, over across the top of the ceiling and come over here to this side of the shop where the, uh, where the do-all is. And I want to have air supply over here as well. But I'll make it to where I can branch off of that. So it's a pretty simple setup. I used uh, Unistrut and just lag them all to the wall and just you know clamp them in nice and rigid the uh, the piping and I got it coming down to this side I just have it hooked into that one air air hose reel right here but I ran it all the way to the end and uh, capped it off so that whenever I need to I can go uh, I can go through the wall if I need to or I can keep running around or whatever but I kind of messed up whenever I did that. I should have I should have put another T in right here, and I didn't do that. But that's the nice thing about that PVC. It's real easy to cut and glue it together. So it's a it's a cheap way to do it, inexpensive way to run an airline. It's not the it's not the best choice out there, but it is pretty inexpensive. You go with the uh, Schedule 80. I don't recall what the uh, what the make of that pipe is, but it's good stuff. I haven't had a blowout yet, and it's been in here for uh, three and a half years. It's been doing pretty good. So that's the airline system. It's still a work in progress. Got a lot more to do. All right, so hopefully that answers some more of your questions. And as I say every time, if you want to know anything else, just drop me a comment in the video description there, and, and I'll see if I can answer them here on video. So I, I know there wasn't a lot of technical stuff in this episode, and I, I do have some more things planned. I've had requests for um, how to how to read micrometers, and I've had requests for uh, showing different types of indicators, and I've also had a lot of requests for showing different types of metal, how to, um, I guess, how to choose what metal that you're trying to work with there. So. Those are some more subjects that I want to bring up in future episodes of the shop talk here and plus whatever else comes along the way. So see you on the next episode.